Hey, back as Kieran here again with a, a look back at uh, game week 34. So how many of you had Pele and, and Doy in your team? Not many, I guess. And with three of the top four not scoring during game week 34, I think our colleague Ben Dinnery said that's the first time that's happened since 2008. No goals for either Arsenal, Chelsea or United. It was definitely a week where your ability to pick out non-obvious players should have reaped you rich reward. Um, I guess that could be said in most game weeks, but in particular this week, there was no fallback options. Aguero, Kane, uh, Hazard, they weren't scoring two, three goals. Um, of course, uh, in terms of Pele, you're preaching to the converted with uh, with my colleague, Devo1099. He's been a big fan of his. He's, always, he's been telling us he'd come good. And he did. And his value, obviously, is is the most appealing thing. Uh, Southampton are still a top five, top six team, and despite you know their their struggles at scoring goals recently uh, in a home match up against a a pretty porous Spurs defence, he was always going to be a nice option, and he did represent good value. Qualifiers aside, for me this weekend, um, which can be a frustrating experience. Uh, not bad. We're, fantasy football backers have started off uh, running some double up competitions on Wolfbet and Play On. Um, so obviously, I entered those, and Collar Off pretty much delivered for me across them. Um, you won't be hearing a late swap rant this weekend. I think everything went pretty much according to plan. Um, but in terms of late swap, I don't know if many of you are aware of a, a US company called Draft Goal. Um, I think they're a relatively new player. Um, I originally thought they'd only be available to US-based players like Draft Kings, but um, they've let me they've let me register, so I'm going to have a go at them this weekend. Uh, I think it looks like they do late swap. Um, I'm just going to see how the rest of the uh, the rest of the game stacks up, and of course we'll let you know. That could be a really interesting development, and uh, we'll see if others follow during the summer. So going back to the action, uh, boring, boring Chelsea was the talk of most of yesterday, and that was certainly the the song that reverberated around the Emirates, but Chelsea just <laughs> carried on regardless. And the title's pretty much now a formality. Personally, I think the ease which we, with which this Chelsea side has won the title speaks volumes about it. Uh, a pretty poor quality Premier League, and it, you know it's no surprise our Champions League performances reflect that. Um, and it looks like it's going to be that way for a while. We, we, you know, we seem incapable of producing our own players like the Bundesliga and financial fair play, which you know hamstrings a lot of clubs. Um, top talent still going to go to Spain. I guess as equally telling is is. Is despite the, the relatively low quality compared to Spain, the, you know those top teams. Is how competitive our league is. You know, if you look at those Champions League semi finalists and, and all eight quarter finalists, really, it could be argued that they're in leagues where only two or three teams can win it. Uh, they don't have to be at their best week in week out, and over a season, you know that catches up with you. And our teams tend to go out post Christmas. You've got to factor in the Christmas break as well. Um, so the Premier League may be a lower quality competition, but it's undoubtedly the most competitive league in the world. It's just that our teams pay for that challenge. You've got to be at it week in, week out. And in terms of that, and the chase for these spaces, Spurs, Southampton and Liverpool uh, all drew this weekend. So the top four is looking pretty secure. Liverpool have got a game in hand on United. And are only seven points behind. But you can't see it happening, especially with the news this morning that it looks like Storage might not play again this season. Um, you know, that's a bad blow for Liverpool, and uh, not least uh, the player himself. So, yeah, those those top four, they're pretty secure. Chelsea are going to win it, and then the, the other three are playing, I guess, for who's going to qualify, who has to play in the Champions League pre qualifier in the summer. Um, City have got themselves in a good spot, but they're looking vulnerable. Uh, interestingly, they take on Spurs next at White Hart Lane. Uh, this won't be a game for defenders. Uh, both teams look like they can score goals, but uh, are pretty porous at the back. 
So that's definitely one to, to have a look for midfielders and, uh, and attackers this weekend. Perhaps the most unexpected result of the weekend, though, was United's capitulation at Everton. Um, they definitely look a different side when Carrick doesn't play, and it's probably two for two factors. One, obviously, is his positional sense. The other is that it means Luke Shaw has to come in at fullback because Danny Blinn goes into the midfield, and Shaw simply isn't uh, defensively, at least, um, at that level. I don't know whether he ever will be. He seems a little bit naive positionally. Um, he was caught out by balls in behind him. But I guess the, from a United fan's point of view, the first goal um, was pretty embarrassing, really. The, I think two players, Blind and Blind and McNair, went for a tackle on the edge of the box, and they, it was kind of after you, Claude, and McCarthy burst uh, burst through them both. I think McNair was involved in a pretty similar effort in, against MK Dons in the Capital One Cup earlier in the season. You know, for a defender, that's the worst sin, is, is pulling out of a tackle. If you can imagine Roy Keane, Bruce, Ince, United players of, of old, and they'd have took out, well, <laughs> they'd have took out Danny Blind as well, just get the ball and wipe everyone out. That didn't happen and Everton scored, and then from from then on, uh, it was downhill. And and with when Fellaini went off, that, you know, United have taken a lot of criticism for that Route 1 approach to Fellaini, but without him on the pitch in the second half yesterday, it didn't look like a lot else was going to happen. Elsewhere, uh, the most important game of the weekend was probably Burnley against Leicester. That was a mad couple of minutes. I don't know why Ings didn't take that penalty. Um, but Burnley just can't score goals at the moment, and obviously they paid the price when Leicester broke up field, and that's four on the spot for them, four on the trot. They've got a great chance now. Um, they've got Chelsea in a midweek match, um, which you know they'll probably write off, uh, but they've put themselves in a great position now. Um, but do their players carry more fantasy appeal? Probably not, um, not week in, week out. And Burnley's just don't. I mean, Trippier rewards uh, formats that, to you know where you can, might get points for crosses. Um, but in midfield and attack, no, it's uh, Burnley players just aren't an option at the moment. Elsewhere, Palace have gone totally off the boil. That's a couple of home defeats now to West Brom and Hull. Belassi, Zaha, Punch and Murray, they'd have all been on a lot of teams. Um, next weekend sees them away at Chelsea, so they won't be on a lot of teams. And how about in Newcastle? I mean, they made Swansea look free scoring. I guess the one bright spot on the horizon for them is the return of uh, De Jong. Who is a class player, just injured all the time. Um, he got his goal, but how long before his next injury? Um, so looking ahead to game week 35, if you look in categories of points, uh, Liverpool and West Ham defenders will be popular against QPR and Burnley. Sunderland Southampton's another game which should be low scoring. At the other end of the pitch, we've already talked about Spurs and City. Um, Villa, and e Villa at home to Everton, that could be a high-scoring game. And Hull host Arsenal. And again, that could be a, that could be a good game you know, for goals. So finally, there are a couple of midweek games uh, as teams catch up on their uh, cup fixtures. If you haven't played Pick Live before, give them a go. They're brilliant for these one-off games. Um, you can uh, you can make subs during the games. They're totally interactive and addictive because of that. They are a really unique experience. It, it looks good. Uh, it's a fantastic platform. Give them a go. Um, if you've not joined them before, go to our website. Website. You'll find a link um, where to to increase your bonus, your sign up bonus to get the best value. And stick with us for the rest of the week and the build up to game week thirty five. Ben Dunry will uh, will be uh, coming along with his usual. Uh, Injury information, our table will update and we'll have our own picks for you uh, looking at the weekend as well as the important press conference news on Friday. So that's it for me. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. If you're going to play midweek, good luck and I'll see you next time. Cheers.